hi guys welcome to digital tech join in today's session I'm going to demonstrate to you explain to you the role of one of the design pattern called the repository pattern now why does a design pattern come into picture design pattern provides a proven solution to real-world problems faced in software design the repository pattern is used to decouple business logic and the data access layer in your application now we'll get into the basics and we'll uh, we will start this session by by running through this ppt which i've created for all users so let's get into the the actual definition of design pattern by martin flower which is defined in this book called patterns of enterprise application architect the book is very interesting and if you have not read the book yet then i've added that link in the description please go and purchase it from amazon i'm sure it will be a worth reading this book so let's get back to our definition the repository pattern is a well documented way of working with data sources the repository performs the task of any intermediary between the domain model layers and the data mapping acting in a similar way to set a domain object in memory so let me break this down and explain this concept in a very simple and uh, in a very simple manner so basically the data access layers typically contain storage specific code and method to operate on data or from the data storage the data access layer that the repository abstract can be ORM entity framework or any XML file or it can be any collection of SQL statement what repository pattern does is acts as an intermediary between the business logic and your data access layer it acts as an intermediary it encapsulates your command it narrows down the number of uh, operations required to access with the data data access layer also having repository pattern in your project enables you to absolutely take the advantage of the repository you know abstraction so you don't have to the repository pattern does not need to know whether you are connecting with your sql database or you are connecting with your file database or sql light or you are calling some services and uh, i am going to walk you through some of the examples and uh, simplify this entire process so that everybody understands what exactly is repository pattern now let's go ahead from the definition to a scenario which will actually clear out most of your queries assuming you're a developer and you have developed a mobile application as of now this application connects to your ms sql database server now you have written code without the repository pattern in place and you're connecting your services directly from the app to ms sql database the project is live and after a couple of days your project manager walks in and he tells you that your code will also now connect to your SQL light so having MS SQL database there in place there is a functionality which requires you to connect to your SQL light database you write code obviously you need to make some changes and you do write some routines and connect to your SQL light database now after a couple more more days your manager comes up and says that you're supposed to connect to some API and fetch some data or do some database operations through the APIs. Now again you need to make changes in your code and then again you need to publish the application and uh, obviously you need to take care of your coding, unit testing and everything. And finally after a few more days your manager comes in and then he tells you to connect to your AWS S3 bucket to fetch some data or upload some data. Now if you see at the situation as a developer you'll have to keep changing the code because your data access layer is continuously changing its data source now this is not a, a desired approach because we generally need to develop anything any solution whether it's a mobile app or it's a website we need to make a solution that is scalable and that is flexible now there is no scalability over here and there's no flexibility over here each time you make a code change you need to do a unit testing you need to uh, put some efforts then there are some exceptions that will come through then you push it on a UAT production and everything this is totally not a desirable approach 
let us now see how repository pattern comes into picture assuming look at this diagram now what happens once repository pattern is in picture now you are now you have implemented an interface class which actually is connecting to your repository implementation actual implementation and your repository is connecting to your different data source now as just assuming that you have this repository you add this repository in place when you actually first implemented your database as ms sql database ms sql database while it was connecting to that now if you add repository pattern and if your boss your project manager walks in and says that you need to connect to sqlite you need to add, you don't need to do anything with your in your app level code because your your app only talks to your repository interface class and there is how you just change your repository interface class and your data access layer will take care your implementation class will take care of connecting to various data source now this has become so flexible and obviously scalable tomorrow if the fifth data source comes into picture you just need to make some changes in your interface and your repository implementation and your work is done so i hope i hope guys you understood this we are not uh, stopping here we need we have also created a small demo application and which i have created in mvc and i'm going to show you how that's going to work too now going back to a demo application currently i've set up a mvc web application which uses this architect it is a web server it has a controller controller connects directly to the data db contest entity framework for database operations so db contest entity framework connect to your database so in our case the existing project which i have set up connects to your ms sql database now what are we proposing to implement repository pattern which i am going to demonstrate right now so we are proposing this layer we are going to change this layer this level of architect and we are going to come back to this one so what are we doing here as i explained in the demo of mobile application we have a controller now it connects to your repository repository implementation db contest and database so this is a proposed structure of our architect so just to finish off with the slide work so what are the advantage minimize the duplicate queries reduce redundancy of code easy to maintain you can change the data access layer without changes in repository code or logic forces programmer to use certain pattern across application for data access i hope you guys have understood the actual meaning of repository and how that can be implemented now let's get back to our project so guys this is a project as i mentioned this is a, a project which i have created on mvc application right now it is not implementing any repository pattern or so it has a it has a dto which as uh, which is uh, which is customer id name and mobile uh it has a db contest class which which is referred as over here and then obviously it has a controller which is actually calling the db contest class directly and fetching the customer information i have created one method called get users let's show this i'll show the data and i will show in the postman what is happening currently so this is the api i click on get and see you can see the data being populated fetched from the database now what are we going to do is that we are going to actually implement the repository pattern over here so guys let's go ahead the first thing we are going to do is we will create an interface so i create a folder interface and i create an interface says so its customer i'm calling as i create an interface make sure you select interface and see hi customer repository so our interface class is ready Okay, make sure that you say public now in this interface class i am going to add three method public task and 
customer DTO and this says get customers we'll call the DTO reference over here and um, it's using this one okay it's come over here so, it's so this is get customer and uh, I can also add one more method for you guys to add new customer So now our interface is only implementing, it's not implementing, it's declaring two methods. One is get customers and add customers. Once our interface is ready, let's go ahead and create the actual implementation class. So we go ahead and in the, your data folder, we create a class called customer repository. Now the customer repository obviously will interface inherit interface which we created customer repository and we add this now obviously this error is going because we have not implemented these two fixes so we just say So these are the two methods right so let's go ahead and implement this now before we implement this we need to call the data contest class over here so we say private data contest and we create a we create a constructor generate constructor okay so we have created a constructor which takes in the data contest class and it assigns it okay now what we are going to do is we are implemented we let's implement it get customer first so we are saying return await to use this library framework.core microsoft framework.core yes still we are getting an error okay so I, this is a key so this method will return you all the customers now let's go ahead and implement add new customers so for adding new customers we see new customer TTO and we say customer name customer dot customer name which we pass it in the parameter and we adding customer dot mobile so we have added two parameter two fields and we say contest dot customers dot add and we say new customer s dot save changes async and then we what is the error over here async and then we return a confirmation to the calling method as customers customer details 
saved successfully so we have actually done the implementation here if you notice our repository implementation repository class is actually uh, calling the data contest and as implemented to uh, the routines to fetch the customer and add a new customer now let's go back to our main controller customer here if we see that data contest is currently used now we need to get rid of this data contest because we don't need to directly connect with the data contest so what are we going to do we are going to replace this with the i repository class so we are saying private read only i customer repository we need to call in the required references okay and let's change it to user or customer repository it do the same over here and and this is Now we go back to our and just replace this too. And we don't need to call the database. We just say get. That's it. Now this is a level of abstraction which you're doing. We're just saying repository get customer. That is the level of data abstraction which I was talking about. So now this class controller does not know the data contest. It does not know this class, and it also it just knows the interface. And uh, um, as I as I mentioned, the repository class over here, customer is repository is actually uh, is a class which I will be do doing the actual implementation whether it is uh, it is a MS SQL database or it is a MySQL database whatever it is it suppose this will handle all the data source and data logic uh, you know operations requirements and your controller just knows the interface so this is so, so simply explained now let me also go ahead and add uh, do our implementation for adding a new customer so this will be basically a post method and just copy this and yes. HTTP post and we are going to say public async task action result string because we are going to return string saying that the customer add customer and we are going to say pass the DTO let's go customer and we are just going to say return that's it so th this is what we need to do in our controller class let's run this and see the output I showed you the output before implementing the repository pattern there won't be absolutely any change in that so yes the project is now running let's hit the same method again and see the output Yeah, guys. So, so basically, the exception was because I had not 
injected this interface in the class so I'll say services dot add scope and I say I customer repository and customer repository just build this yes so it's built now let's go ahead and try it again Close the post notice. Since I had not injected this interface into the class, it threw that error. So now I'm just on it and I just say click send. Okay, I had to put a debug, it's not required now. I just remove it and then. and if you can see the output is there so guys see how i hope you have understood the concept i have explained this with i have explained theoretically as well as i have shown you practically how you can implement the repository pattern how this pattern which we uh, inter we create an interface and how we can implement the, uh, the actual class which will take care of the data access layer and handle all the data access operations so your controller your main class your business logic does not need to know f what is a database what is a backend and uh, from where it is get connecting to get the data so i i hope this uh, this was insightful and uh, please do subscribe the channel and please do like this video thank you guys thanks a lot